17 at 7 p.m. Mr. Kicker. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Lethley. Here. And Mr. Craybock. Here. Seven present. Thank you, sir. All right, Tom, if you'll uh, stand, we'll do the pledge of allegiance. The pledge of allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I want that back to the Tonight's on the stage of life, Councilman John Craybar. Please bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come before you, for you're the Father of peace. Heavenly Father, there's a lot of hatred going on, a lot of violence going on in this country right now. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for peace in this country. Now we have differences, sometimes differences in opinions, differences in many ways, but we can be together. We can, we can respect each other's opinions and respect each other's differences. We ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon us tonight and let this be a council of peace, let this be a place a sanctuary, and we pray in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, sir. There's a seat down. Gentlemen, there's a couple of seats back here if you want to grab them real quick. All right, I will need to get actions on the regular schedule council meeting for August 7th, 2017. So moved. Speaking as a citizen of this city, and I made that explicit. I would ask that references to my business be removed. They do, sir. Thank, Thank you. Gene's not here, obviously, tonight, so we'll make sure we pass it on to Mr. Call. <coughs> Thank you, Dad. So, motion was Mr. Kraybacher? Yes, yes, sir. And second was uh, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Council, any other questions or comments on the minutes before we move forward? When you're ready, sir. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. And Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving on to communication. Is that correct, Mr. Bridge? None this evening. And we'll drop down to the city manager report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. We'll start off with our finance discussion from our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, mayor, and residents that have come join us tonight. I'm going to talk about our July finance report. Total revenue for the month of July is $399,523.68. Total expenses for the month of July is $293,845.47. That brings the year to date on the revenue collected at $3,358,249.56. Year-to-date expenditures are $2,606,777.73. On our tax collection as of the end of June, we took in for the general fund $78,869.67 for a total year-to-date through June 30th. $563,198.13. For the half a percent police levy income tax, we took in through June 30th $39,434.84 for a year to date in the police 
uh, fund of $279,818.32. I put a little um, cost um, information that CCA, the company that we go with for income tax collection, what their charges were versus what we've done in house was asked by one of the council members last month. So the collection so far during up through June 30th, first half of the year, CCA has charged us $16,405. That equals a little under 2%. The cost this same time last year for the city to do the collection in-house was $56,100. So, so far year to date, we've saved almost $40,000. It is $39,695 by outsourcing our income tax. A little breakdown on our general fund that I have on my report every month, our revenue. I'm going to update that next month. It only shows through June, but as of June, we <laughs> collected 50% of our estimated revenue at $653,329.11. And in the general fund through June, we have expended only 40% of our estimated expenditures, and that amount came to $525,978.13. Sorry about not including July. I will have that updated next month. Second page of my report, I did put in a pool report. The revenue for the pool for the month of July is $16,865.58. For a year to date collection for the season of the pool up through July of $60,395.88. Our expenditures for the pool as of July, the end of July, is $16,312.05. And our year to date, is $49,885.71. So at the end of July, the pool is um, has a profit of $10,510.17. That is my report, and I'll entertain any questions that anybody might have. Uh, Mr. Locke, Leslie first, and then Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Ms. Harris, I just want to thank you for putting the collection information there for CCA. Interested to see what those costs are, and it's those are nice stats. So thank you. Mrs. Harris, uh, is all the bills in on the pool yet, or do we still have a flurry or something coming in? We will have more bills and more revenue. We just closed it, I believe, Saturday was the last day, Sunday was the last day, so of August. So at the end of August, it'll be a little bit more complete. We will usually have additional bills coming in September and it's up to October, depending upon how they yeah. they come through. But the majority on the next month's report for August should give us a good idea. Okay. The, uh, it has pool rentals here. Is, is that just for, they didn't have any at all this year? I thought they had rented the pool out this year. They rent it out, but it's in a different, it's included in the revenue. There's, okay. it's not a specific line item okay. on this report. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Council, any other questions, comments? Thank you, Ms. Harris. I appreciate it. Mr. Burke. Thank you. And moving on to the city manager report, our service director, uh, a.k.a. acting clerk of council today, Mr. <laughs> Howard uh, Kiko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, under service departments, the service department is on the streets trimming up overgrown trees. Uh, they're encroaching the street and sidewalk height requirements. Uh, before we did this project, we did have that uh, on all the water bills. We had a news article, um, Facebook page, so we got it out there. And um, things have been going well. We're about 60% complete, which is pretty much all of the old section of town. Uh, if you see anything out there that seems to be um, not in compliance or just seems odd, you're low hanging and that we may have missed or we're not to yet, uh, feel free to give me a call uh, up at the city building. Boom arm mowing, uh, that was scheduled to be on the bike path a couple weeks ago. That has been delayed. We are using the Clark County Engineer's Office to do that for us, and they are actually behind on their mowing also. They did some ditch mowing, but they have not done any boom arm mowing as of yet. Uh, they told me hopefully within the next couple weeks. Uh, water department will be replacing uh, at least four fire hydrants here in the near future. We're supposed to get one later on, later on this week, get the first one in. Uh, new hydrants have arrived and we are scheduling those. 
Hydro flushing schedule still will be released at a later date. We did get uh, the water tower inspection completed, and I will be getting with the fire department soon to where we can go out and do some hydro flushing. Uh, just got another estimate back on a municipal lot to uh, level up some uh, dips we have in it and seal coat and restripe that parking lot. Um, updates to come on that, but um, we should be here soon to get that completed. Various Street Project, which we've had on the um, report for some time, is spinning Willowick, Applewood, Clover, Leaf, Pepperwood, and 235 Water Dog. Um, the project has started, that was June 22nd, and it has just been hard getting the milling crew to get them with a the paver in at the Water Dog at the same time because we can't pay without the milling crew. I spoke with the engineer's office today. Um, we are trying to get them in as fast as possible. Uh, they've just been busy. Rain has delayed some of their paving also. But we did get some of the, we did get our curb work done. Um, hopefully some of the new curb we got in will last and will re, um, not have the puddling that we had there on spinning by the public walk. So um, the schedule is very flexible. Hopefully we can get them in here sooner than later. Prentice Drive Phase 3 slash Phase 4 reconstruction, that did start today. Um, that is scheduled to be completed within 60 days. Letters, uh, I delivered those letters last, uh, early last week to the residents, and I've only had a couple calls uh, with some concerns, but um, like I said, 60 days are usually done um, before that, and with those, the citizens usually won't have too much of an issue in and out of their driveway approaches. They really try to do a good job, but once they rip out the road, they put some gravel in so they can get in and out of their driveways. And Scarf Road Water Tower, that was inspected Friday, July 14th. Scarf Tower was placed back online shortly after the inspection was completed. The city did receive the tank evaluation report on 816, and currently staff is reviewing that document. Uh, once we get through that, I'm sure we will be coming to council uh, with some information. And that is currently all I have. I can entertain any questions on the report or anything on top of that. Um, the boom are Boeing, you said Clark County is doing that? Clark County Engineers Office. Okay, do we have to pay for Clark County to, to do that? On this one, yes we do. Do you know what that, what we're To do all the bike path, uh, some part of Brubaker entrance, and do a little bit down by uh, the pool, where we're starting to get growth out into it near um, New Carlisle Pike, uh, it's, it's about, I think it's about $1,000. $1,000, okay. Um, this, I've been noticing down by Church and Lincoln, they're on that corner of floods all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a good, is there anything we can do about it? I know it's been doing that for years, ever since they put that big hump in there. there is there anything we can do? It's not so much, the, well, it's not so much the hump that there is only one storm drain right. that drains all the way from Lake all the way down through there. And it catches all the church and all of the side streets. It's just so, so undersized. I have looked at that when we ever get a chance to redo the utilities under church uh, to put more catch basins and more piping in to address that situation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Craybocker. Council, any other questions, comments from Mr. Kitko? Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. I'm moving on with the city manager report and our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. The mayor, the council, and the citizens. For the month of July, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 80 EMS calls in the city, 9 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 15 fire-related calls in the city and 0 in Elizabeth Township. We had 4 EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered 3 mutual aid calls to Pike Township and 1 to Bethel Clark. In the month of February, the division responded to 2 overdose calls. Assistant Chief Geisman taught 3 CPR classes for a total of 5 personnel. Assistant Chief Geisman also has decided to retire from the fire division uh, to pursue other things in her life, which she's wanting to go on and do some other things, which is great. And she'll be really missed with the division. Uh, with that being said, Assistant Chief Tony Cooper will uh, become the Assistant Chief of EMS. Tony Cooper is a 14-year veteran with the fire division, came in the division as a firefighter and worked his way up the ranks of holding lieutenant, captain, assistant chief of uh, special ops, and then now assistant chief of EMS. Very um, intelligent person. Uh, he's also a full-time firefighter paramedic with uh, Springfield Township. Uh, if you've driven by the station the past week or so, you may have noticed that uh, we've been doing some painting and repairing of the outside of the station, repainted the fronts, the sides, uh, over the windows and under them. 
what's nice is all the work that was done to the station was done by firefighters either on duty or firefighters that just come in to help uh, to get it done. But we contracted none of the work out. It was all done in-house. And basically that's the report for July. Council? Very well. Um, somebody asked me since of the incident of the lady that uh, burnt her, her 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 baby in, in I think it was Montgomery County or something. You know, uh, she was a teenager. Uh, she, buried, she buried it. Car yeah. Okay. She you buried know. the child. Yes. All right. Word. Question. The question was asked to me. Do we have a safe area if somebody? Had you know had a child they did not want, want safe, the safe law act allows anyone to drop off any child at any police station or fire station without any questions asked. The only question that we that we can ask is the baby healthy? Does the baby need anything? And that's the only question we would, we would ask, and then we would immediately turn the take the baby to the hospital and turn it over to children's services. Okay, in other words, if, you know, if something like that happened and, and she was really just uh, her mother was distraught, they could drop her off at the fire department. Then. Yes, that's okay. a, that's a, a uh, nationwide law. Yeah, I was looking that up. That's why I wanted mm -hmm. just to make sure, make sure there is an age limit with that, though. And I can't remember off the top of my well, head. I want to say it's. I want to say six months, but I'm not for sure. Sure. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, there is an age. I was trying to think of myself, but I can't remember exactly what the age limit is. Yeah, somebody asked me at the farmer's market about that. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Can I ask any more questions, comments? Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Chief Trustee. Moving on with our uh, city manager report is our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. <clears throat> Mr. Bruce, Mayor, Council, and citizens. Duke of all deputies were dispatched 89 calls last month. We had one assault, two domestic violence calls, four overdose, six theft, three non injury accidents, 25 citations, and one drug complaint. And the drug complaint number bothers me. Uh, we get complaints from people out on the street, but they don't seem to want to phone in for whatever reason. So hopefully that number will increase. Okay. If you see something you think is suspicious, you think it's drug activity, we are taking a look at it. And this falls into that. In February of this year, Sheriff Burchett introduced a drug interdiction team, and that included, including that was an OVI car and a canine, along with other members of the Clark County Sheriff's Office. The DIT team has been very active, making arrests almost daily and actually they're doing a great job. Uh, the drug interdiction team statistics right now is they have made uh, 181 criminal arrests with 133 drug charges. There's six weapons charges with that and 388 citations involved in that. Um, that's a great start for the drug interdiction team. I, I wish them I guess safety is about the only thing I can think of right now. Uh, that's a tough job to do. Uh, you have an OVI car out, uh, you have a canine car out, and, and you're looking for specifically these people that are on drugs and overdose types. And we all know the school started again. Please remember that the zones are 20 miles an hour, and you do not need flashing lights on to be a 20 miles an hour zone. In fact, in Ohio, the speed limit in the school zone remains 20 miles per hour, 24 hours day and night. Um, if you see school activity, uh, there's a Friday night ball game, uh, you see something going on at four o'clock in the afternoon, technically that's a 20 mile an hour speed zone. So not necessarily does the sign have to be on. And the reason I mention that, especially at the beginning of the school year, um, sometimes it's hours change of when school begins and ends, and they don't have their signs synced in with those hours yet. So please be careful in the school zones. Uh, and another big reason not to get a citation in a school zone is fines are doubled. So you're looking at a $300 ticket. Uh, wish you luck there. And, and we've had a bad incident over the weekend. Uh, we lost a couple of children from the school around here, and, and we, we, we need to do whatever we can to cut that down. 
in our school bus laws. If you're approaching a school bus from either direction of the stop school bus, you must stop at least 10 feet from loading and unloading. So you need to stay back at least 10 feet. And if you don't know, stay back 20 feet. Um, school bus is stopped on a road that is divided into four or more lanes. Only traffic driving in that same direction has to stop. The school bus, it's, it's mandatory for the school bus to go on the lane to let the child out on the right side. So, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't proceed with caution. Now, the kids are not watching the traffic. It's one of the only times that the children are told in the schools not to watch traffic. The school bus driver is watching the traffic for them. And the kid is supposed to make eye contact with the school bus driver. But the law says that she can flag you on. If her hand is out in the state of Ohio like this, and she goes like that, she just told that kid to cross the street it was safe. That's no indication for you to drive by. And that can get confusing, so uh, all of us need to pay a little more attention to what we're doing, especially when the children are around, slow down. Uh, it's just not worth it. With that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Sarge. Mr. Lowry. I would never ever doubt you, but I do have a question. Sure. Okay, and that's on the 20 mile an hour speed limit um, in front of schools. I travel 41 quite a bit. And the school up there, it says 20 mile an hour when flashing. So I thought, to be honest with you, if it's not flashing, it's, you know, regular speed limit. Uh, I can give you the order. No, I believe you. I'm, you know, I did not know that. I, Most agencies aren't running traffic out there in times when kids aren't in school. And honestly, we try to give you a break. Uh, because we all know what the fines are. If you're, if you're a cop, you know what's going on. And so, but if somebody's in the in the school on the roadway, parents night, uh, you, you really need to be 20 miles an hour, even if you don't get a ticket. Okay. So Thank you. But that's yeah. I'm yeah because it says 20 miles an hour when flashing, so that's what I thought it was. So I thank you for that. Appreciate a lot of that. Though. Any other questions? Uh, Chief, you've got, <laughs> in the month of um, February, the division responded to two overdose. Now, is this, the, is this a February? Yeah, I'm statistic? sorry. That was a typo. It should be, it okay. should be July. Okay. Then, then, then he has four on his. That's why I was going to ask him. To <laughs> that just happened. All right. Thanks, Sergeant. Appreciate the report. Keep up the good work, sir. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, and moving on with the city management report under informational items. City website upgrade, just so some of uh, some audience members don't know, we will be updating the city's website. Um, hopefully it's about half of we done at this point. Part of the upgrade, we're going to have professional photo photographs of the city council members and also select city administration members, just to give the outside world a visual of who runs the city. Um, so with that being said, the last council meeting, I did ask some uh, council members to get some availability down. Um, I do have some more information. Um, we cannot take the pictures on Monday. So at this point in time, I would like to set a date to have those pictures done based off council's availability. What? Does evenings work for Mr. Grimm? Uh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. And we can, um, I would suggest probably sometime after the Labor Day weekend. So maybe Tuesday, and it can probably be multiple days. So if I did like a 12th and a 19th, can we, amongst the six of you, because I know um, we have a council member who maybe already has a photo that they're going to use, um, which is fine. If we have them set over two dates, you guys can fill in as your schedule warrants. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Did you say September 16th and 19th? Well, we can. I'm, 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 it's really up to you guys right now. It's the 12th and 9th. They're sticking out. That's, okay. Those are both Tuesdays. Yeah. Or we can do like a Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday would be the 12th and the 13th. That's fine. We're not prolonging the photographer from getting any work done. What's the time? Um, we'll keep that out in the open when I talk to the photographer. But at least we got some dates so I can get going. Okay. And we do want uniformity, so some sort of black shirt, I mean, black jacket, white shirt, and a black tie would be fantastic. You said a black shirt? With a I mean, tie? black jacket, white shirt, we didn't black look like tie. You. <laughs> well, we gotta look to we gotta have somewhat uniformity there. Black tie. Sure, we're back to taking people to the gray. Mm -hmm. No, I wear red tie. Red, blue. Red, red, red. Sig. Red is a symbolism of power. So, however you want to, yeah, however you want to do it is up to you guys, really. So, we'll just see how it turn out and go from there. Yeah. Well, the last thing you want is like seven people not. You know, if you look at other cities, everyone's in the same. You know, uniformity, very professional looking. And that's the image that we are trying to portray with our website. A one good uniform looking picture. Um, <coughs> but at the end of the day, it's your business call. I've never known to be. Thank you, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. And moving on, Board of Zoning Appeals approved a, set, a side setback variance for Fab Metals <coughs> to build a new 40 to 50,000 square foot facility right next to where they're currently at. And that's great news for the city of New Carlisle. Um, it's a huge expansion for them. So hats off to the Board of Zoning Appeals for approving that variance. It went over unanimously. Uh, so they will be starting uh, some uh, site preparation work here very shortly. And hopefully we can see some walls going up here in the near future. Um, also, one of our Crown Vic police cruisers was involved in a car wreck. Uh, first and foremost, the deputy is okay. He has returned to work. Uh, we will have more information and discuss replacing that cruiser once we have some more information back from our insurance carrier. Online water payments legislation will be brought to City Council at the next Council meeting. That is September 5th, 2017 for the first review. And the second review will be acting on it would be September 18th, 2017. And again, that is to uh, allow online water payments uh, for the City of New Carlisle. And one last item, and this is included in the Council packets as an attachment. There's one in English and there's also a second one in Spanish. Uh, but the Farmer's Market will provide a free shuttle from the Park Lane Elementary to the Farmer's Market, uh, namely the CVS parking lot, on August 26th, so that's this week. And it runs from 10 o'clock to noon. So if you do need a ride to our Farmer's Market and you are in the Park Lane area, please take advantage of this free shuttle. It is a great, great tool to have. They have, have seen some uh, success with it. Um, I do believe this is the last time of the year that this bus will be operating. So definitely take advantage of it if you do need a ride to our farmer's market, and that is actually going back, too. So if you are in Park Lane, come on up. You can take the bus on back, too. That's all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council, Mr. Webb. Just, just one comment. When we talk, I know it's going to be discussed later on, but the online water payments, uh, uh, we just want to reiterate that it's going to allow online water payments. Yes. There was a lot of discussion on Facebook about, oh, we got to pay it's just a, one more opportunity to pay, not a requirement. It's not a requirement. It's still an option. You can still have your bank send us. We can get that set up in-house, and that doesn't cost a, a charge. You can mail us a check. So there's still multiple free options to pay. Uh, but we have had a lot of requests for online payment. <coughs> and just in case anyone is watching or sitting in the audience, there is a third-party company out there now that will do this for you online, but it is no way affiliated with the city of New Carlisle. So be careful with who you choose to pay that because what happens is it takes a little bit longer for your bill to get to us. And if it's not there by the cutoff date, then we don't have the payment. So again, there is a third party company out there that will do it online. I would highly advise against doing that. Councilor, any questions for Mr. Bridges? Mr. Bridges, on the uh, photos of council and administration, when will these pictures be put on the website when they update it in are you revamping the web website soon? Or? That's in the process. Council approved that legislation about two months ago. I know we approved it. When will it happen? Yeah. Um, it takes some time, so we'll check in with him. He should be about halfway through at this point. Okay. <clears throat> well, the other thing I was asking, since we do have elections coming up in November, sure. we may want to wait until after the elections to actually have our photos taken. 
we may not have some people here. Well, the, the website will be done before that, um, but we'll just have to update the website accordingly. Okay, could be another way to say what you do. Just throwing that out there. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Council, any other questions for the city manager this evening? Um, one thing is, how many jobs is it Fab Meadows? their employment about 45 percent i do believe that he's in the market don't quote me on that number but they are going to uh, look at hiring more staff positions and i want to say in a conversation we had to him it's up to i think another five to ten people okay and that's on the low okay. i was in a meeting the other day about food access mm -hmm. um, now i'm on the osu extension uh food committee or whatever they call it and part of the, what they were talking about this is just to add on to was how do we get people from one point to another point? They were talking about transportation. Sure. So I hope people do take advantage of this, you know, because it is a good advantage from, uh, to go from the farmer's market from Park Lane to New Carlisle. Absolutely. And back again. Sure. You know, older people should really take advantage of it. I agree with you. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions or comments for the city manager before we move on? Mr. Bridge, thank you for the report as always, sir. Thank you. <coughs> All right. I'm sure we move down to comments from the members of the public. So if anyone has any questions, comments, we'd ask you to go to the podium and give us your uh, full name and address. Plumwood Drive, New Carlisle. I am the pool manager at New Carlisle. Um, I know our numbers look good. I'm hopeful that they will remain positive after all of the bills come in. Um, regardless, I think we had a great season. Um, I just wanted to go over a few numbers that aren't in the financial report, and that's to tell you that through the course of our season, we had 10 water saves. We had 15 children on our swim team, and it's the first time the New Carlisle pool has ever had a swim team. 49 years old and we had a swim team this year. Um, we had 40 children learn how to swim at our pool this year. We had nearly 50 parties, for pool rentals, um, fundraisers done at the pool. Um, we had two daycare groups that took advantage of the pool and brought their kids there, you know, on a fairly regular basis. Um, and then back to the, the swim team, um, we weren't able to host home swim meets this year because we were just starting off and we didn't have the proper equipment. Um, so our swim team would practice at our pool and then they would host at other pools. Um, Game Time Sports Center donated starting blocks and lane lines. Uh, they got new equipment and they donated their old to us. It's in pretty good uh, condition. Um, they're not permanent starting blocks. It's something we can put out and put back away. So this is a really good thing for us because we will be able to host swim meets at our own pool next year when the pool is 50 years old. Um, we're hoping to plan some big things for next year. Um, you know, and it took everybody to have a great season. I mean, the, the city guys, Mr. Kitko and his workers at the water park department, they were a huge help and Colleen and Victoria and Angie and Kathy, everybody in the city building, you know, they have to deal with our daily paperwork and you know that's something that they're not used to doing on a normal day you know it's just three months a year we're a little bit of a nuisance here you go see you thanks um, our employees I really have the best employees our employees are Tecumseh students Northwestern students Shawnee students are all from the area um, and I, I can't say enough about my employees they're all great I have Taylor Dennis here she's the assistant manager uh, Alex Kennedy he's here one of the lifeguards. Seth Pierce is here. He's a returning lifeguard. He's been here for a couple years. And Taylor's been here for three, four years. She can't get enough of us. And she doesn't even live in New Carlisle. Um, I have Michelle here. She's a returning guard. She's already told me she's coming back next year. Her sister's going to get certified and be here next year. So, um, you know, and we do need lifeguards. So if you guys want to be a part of something, you know, get certified over the winter and come see me in the spring. So, uh, that's all I wanted to say was really thank you to 
everybody, all the citizens, everybody in New Carlisle, we had a lot of support, a lot of positive comments this year, and we appreciate that. So thank you. Mrs. Sauer, you might want to go back up there because I think everybody should have to say something. Um, thank you, you know, on behalf of the community, have had somebody who has kids in this town. I mean, this is just a prime example of a small group of people working with the city and making something big happen. You know, the New Carlisle pool isn't just, you know, as of right now, I know there's still bills taken out, but your 10 grand, you know, profit. That's unbelievable seeing what was like 40 grand. In the hole, and here we are now. And it's because of you and your staff, your dedication. There's always a reason to not do something because I know you have family and I know you have other activities to do. So thank you so much. Like I said, uh, a service to the community when you're teaching, you're having practices, daycares are coming in. Uh, I mean, how many kids do you guys teach this one this year? 40. 40. That's awesome. That's incredible. And next year you're going to be hosting meets. So, I mean, that's just even growing more. So that's people coming outside of our community into New Girl Out for a purpose. So thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Whatever the city can do to uh, help you, I hope everybody up here supports it. Oh, somebody else work that took Mr. Lauer? Yes, I'd like to say something. Um, Michael, myself, her, and all of my family, uh, we are close family. Many, many functions this year that young lady didn't get to go to because of the pool. She put in a ton of hours. April, I thank you. Yeah, we want to thank you and your staff, but uh, I'm just glad we don't pay you by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're there way, 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 way too much, but that's it. We thank you for that and your dedication. And uh, uh, it's someplace that I don't go because you want to see me in a bathing suit. So, <laughs> thank you very much for all your help. Uh, I know my wife brought our grandkids there a couple times. I know she said something to you. And, you know, they had a great time. What they, they loved to do is to slide. Uh, my grandson, you know, he loved the diving board and could hardly keep him off of it. And so, they, you know, I have to say a couple years ago, I was very doubtful, but the last two years, thanks. Thank your wife for asking how she can help for next year. She did? Yes, she did. Uh, oh, there you go. I don't want to see him in a bathing suit. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, every day I would drive uh, down Lake Road going past the pool, and there wasn't a day that either you nor you were there or both of you at the same time. So definitely thank you guys for all the hard work you guys both did. Because it's definitely a group effort for both of you guys. Because I can't think of a day that I literally did not drive by and see Silver 44 in the green truck. I can April. So thank you so much. Um, I just I want to add, you know, we've got some more employees, and you know, we look at what we get out of the pool besides swimming. You know, and, I, and I put this on my page not long ago. Excuse me. You know, we get more than swimming out of it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I can't do this without crying. I, I love all these guys over here. Um, you know, these guys are going to college. But, yeah, we provide them with a job to help pay for college. I'm sure they've got you know car payments, so they're they're learning that responsibility of uh, becoming an adult, you know, through the new black pool. So it's giving back to the community in, in so many different ways, and uh, I I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are great. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can't talk about it without getting teary. It's, it's, you know, when you put so much effort with such a great group of people, it's, it's, it's hard not to show your emotions. You know, uh, everybody has pretty much said everything. I do have driven by the pool, seeing your car or, or your truck and her uh, explorer there. Uh, you know, in 15, I was very much against even opening the pool. In 16, because it lost so much money. But in the last two years, I have to say, you two have done one awesome job turning this pool around, making a profit. Hopefully, a lot of this $10,000 will be there when the lady over there, Mrs. Harris, is done paying all your bills for you. I would like to see a $10,000 profit at the end of next year after everything's paid. That'd be great. And with the swim meets coming, I think that's doable. So you, you guys 
have done an awesome job, along with your staff. As I said, my staff, you know, they volunteer hours also, um, and they don't even need to volunteer hours. They volunteer hours. They're learning to be <coughs> instructors, um, learning to be active citizens, they're learning the importance of volunteering and what a difference makes. I listening, you know, I hope people watch this and they look at something that I would say probably over 50% of the town considered to be dead and just this group, you know, not a lot of people, but just hard work and dedication and you brought something back to what it is now. Yeah. And, you know, for anybody who wants something to happen in New Carlisle, you guys showed them that it is possible. So this is so much more than just something successful at the pool. You know, this is a prime example that we can't get things done in New Carlisle if we stay positive and encouraging and you put in the work. So thank you for setting the example and setting the tone. And for all the younger people out there, thank you so much. Keep it up. All right. Anyone else has any questions or comments, please go to the podium. Anyone else got any questions tonight before we move on? Hi, I'm Rhonda Manaman. I live at 317 North Adams Street, and uh, my topic's not near as fun as the pool. <laughs> um, but I wanted to uh, say a couple things about the online payments for the water system that we just talked about a minute ago. Um, I thought we were going to have a reading of that tonight, which is why I was here, and I'm not sure I can come on the nights it's going to occur, so if I could ask a couple questions tonight. Um, I think going to online payments is great. It's progressive. Everybody's doing that. Um, I hope we do it safely and responsibly and friendly. Um, you know, for people who pay with credit cards, a lot of times they have an advantage of doing that. They've got a, a system with their credit card where they earn points, they earn cash back, whatever. So if we're going to charge them $1.95 to use their credit card to make their water bill payment, that's probably going to be offset by what they're going to gain by that. Uh, I wonder how many people are using credit cards to pay their water bills because they have no other choice. Um, people who just got done paying a bunch of money for supplies or clothes for school, for kids to go back to school, uh, Christmas comes around, whatever, $1.95 may not be a lot to some of us, but for some people that is a lot. So I'm wondering if conjunction with this online payment service, if we could consider letting people sign up for quarterly billing and payment. So if they have to pay $1.95, they only have to pay that once a quarter instead of once a month. Okay, gotcha. Mr. Bridge. Very valid concerns. Unfortunately, how it works out, and we have looked at many different scenarios, and the, the company that we choose to go with, they, they base it on your bill being per $100. So if we did quarterly, for every $100 that your bill is, you have to pay that $1.95 fee. So if your bill's $100.01, you have to pay the $1.95 fee twice. The reason we did that is because most of our bills fall under that $100 mark. Okay. Now, again, there are still a lot of free options if you don't want to pay online with your debit card or credit card. You can still mail us a check. You can call Kathy and have her take it directly out of your bank account. Or and, and so, I'm, I'm sorry, am I going to oh, you're fine. go against you're mine? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how this goes. Um, and, and so, I, I can understand that for credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, my information wasn't clear as to whether that would be a cost for ACH payments as well. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe I misread what was in the newspaper, but it very clearly said, I thought, that if you 
walk into the city building and go to pay your water bill by check or cash at the city building, you would have to pay the $1.95 fee. Yeah. And I'm sorry, that is just unfriendly. It, it, that is not the case. That's not the case. If you walk into the city building and you do swipe your card, we will have legislation for us to charge you that $1.90 fee if you use a debit or credit card. You can still walk in and pay cash. You can still walk in and give us a money order. You can still walk in and give us a check. And that is all free. We spend a lot of money on what they call credit card processing fees. And when we had that special right. meeting with the council, I made a diagram that shows right. how much merchant, we pay. Merchant fees. Yes, merchant right. fees. Exactly. And, so, and so merchant fees are usually what, in the 4 or 5% range? Um, I, I think ours came about 3. three. Around yeah. 3 was the average right. when we added so them all up. So my water bill is usually about $12 a month. More if I water my tomatoes during the summer. But, you know, so $1.95 for me, that's 15%. That's 5 what the merchant fees are. How do you usually pay your bill now, ma'am? I usually go into the city building and pay it. With a debit card? Nope. With cash. Cash and you, you won't charge Right. You won't right. Charge I'm not here card. just asking for myself. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to get information in whole is what we were doing. Sure. Because it, okay, here's the thing. I was asleep at the wheel when we signed our trash pickup contract. And there's many things I am very unhappy about with that. So I'm not asleep at the wheel anymore when we're gonna sign a water contract. And so I'm just trying to find out sure. exactly what it's going to be. Um, I, progression is fine. Online is fine. But if we're going to charge for this and charge for that and, you know, there's, oh, you don't have to pay a charge. You can go do it online. That's not an option for a lot of people. You show me the company who will guarantee. Guarantee. There's no fraud. There's no hacking for their online service. That's fine. Um, I also think that we need to be careful with what we sign in our contract. Um, are we going to bid this contract with anybody else? Or has this company already been selected? What do we know about this company? Um, you know, how are they going to be able to forecast how much we're actually going to save that way? I'm sure there's a way that we can forecast what we expect that we would need to pay them and how much money we would save. Unless they're a brand new company, they've got historical trends with the rest of their clients that they can go over with us. Um, and I just, I, I think there should be a clause in the contract where we can opt out for cost or not for cost, just with a 90 day notice or something like that. I don't think we should get a contract that we're locked into and then we're gonna have to have that contract for five years no matter what. Okay, that's, that's my. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. You also, Mayor? What's your name from? Janelle. Janelle. Um, you my yes, please. 219 Prentice Drive. If you have to pay 3%, why are you charging 15%? I, I don't, we're not charging anything. If you, that's the, the fee that the credit card company will charge you to use your credit card. It's not coming from us unless you set foot in our city building and you swipe it at our terminal. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. 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 Oh. Sorry, the 15% isn't there. 15% if, if I pay, if I have to pay the cash and the credit card, the same fee structure as the online to avoid confusion. So if somebody comes in and pays for a permit and swipes their credit card, it needs to be in, in line with the same fee that we charge for online purchasing the swipe that card. Go ahead, Ms. Harris. I have an answer. Also, since your bill is so low, it could be that you, if you don't want to pay that fee each time, you could certainly put a credit on your account. You could pay one time and keep it under 100 and only have the $1.95 fee, and you won't have to pay for a few months till that oh, credit gets used up. That. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just that fee is, is anything from zero to the, the $99, the $100 range is that fee. So you certainly could put a credit on and just watch it, and when it starts running low, you could put another one. reports every morning for what they collected that night to make sure that it coincides. Mm -hmm.
Yep. And again, there are options. If you don't want to pay online, you can revert to the way you're doing it now. The only difference is if you come, if you used to pay with your credit card at the city building or debit card, and you come in after that legislation is approved and, and ready and, and um, us for us to enforce, then you'll have to pay the dollar ninety per one hundred as well. But you can still come in and do your ACH deposit, you can pay cash, or you can drop us off a check, and that is no cost to you whatsoever. So we did. We looked at everyone's a very diverse, we have a diverse population. We got young, we got old, we got people who can want to pay the fee, and we got people who don't. So we do, again, have options for everyone. Another part of the oversight is you. You will have an online account yourself. Thank you. That you will be able to go in, log in, look at your account, say, what's this? And this is, and it, so it's like checking your bank statement. The onus is on you to check your bank statement and make sure there's no errors. The onus will be on you to check that statement as well and find out that you don't have any errors or anything. So, so you, you, in fact, will be your own oversight. Mm -hmm. And for people who would like to do that, that's great. Right. For people who don't want their personal information online, is my information going to be out there anyway? Mm -hmm. No, no. So you're going to create an account with a username and password. This is going to be people that are setting up an online account. Okay. And so I would still be a water bill and be able to my Absolutely. Absolutely. Free of charge mm -hmm. every month. Just yep. another payment option. If you don't want it, nobody will ever know the difference. Well, there are things in the paperwork about it might cost 35 cents a month even to get a bill mailed to your house anymore. No, what that, what that was, if you choose to do paperless billing, you don't want a bill sent to your, sent to your house at all, they charge us 25 cents that the city would pay, not the resident. Yeah. Well, thank you. Anyone else? Questions, comments before we move on? Ma'am? Donna Kugler, 909 Washington Street. I just wanted to inquire since you were talking about the water tower being making progress. At what point is the water rates going to go up to pay for that? We haven't discussed anything yet. We're, they're going to put, like you said, they're going to they're going to get all the information from the report. And I'm assuming Mr. Kitko and Mr. Bridge and Colleen are going to you know work the report up and then present what they suggest with the new numbers that they've got from that report from that company, and then we'll move forward from there. Can so, I interject? Yes, you guys have all received a copy of that report. I emailed it to you. Right. I'd like to put hard copies in there. I would highly advise you guys to read that report because I will not be summarizing it past what it already is. Did you make hard copies? I will, yeah. I, I, I do. have no make. I got you. I'll put one of your things. So read that, and probably here in a couple of weeks, we'll have to go back and pick up where we left off. Right. But I want time for counsel to read that full, it's like 70 page report, um, but it is full of wealth of information or knowledge that you guys really, everyone is in. You probably should look at that report and see how the best suit your city to go forward. That's an interesting report. Yeah. Will that be posted? That report will it be posted? Or I can't put it on Facebook in 70 pages. You have to no, not Facebook, but a, a, a link. Uh, I can put it on the city page. website. Yeah, absolutely. So that people could sure. Do that. That's a great, sure. great idea. Uh, so we're working back towards that spot again, Donna. Okay. We're not, we're not too bad. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything y'all said. <laughs> hey, but, Donna, I'll email it to you. I, I have it. I'll have to report on our way home. That'd be I'll good. It it's good to have a name. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions or comments before we move on tonight? Sir, name and address, please. Hey, Mike, make sure I get that. My name is Brian Circle, 1020 Bittersweet Drive. Brian Circle. I work for the county engineers. I wanted to bring up the did mowing you, on the trail. I'm sorry, did you say Circle? Like in the shape. What yeah. was the address again? 1020 zero zero, Bittersweet zero. Drive. I wanted to bring up the, trying to get the sidearm mower, for, but you've already got that. The second thing my wife spoke to Mr. Bridge about, uh, I would like to uh, volunteer to paint the mile markers on the bike path. Yeah. Yeah, so people know how far they're going and yeah. I'll try and see if I can find you the stencils. Uh, we've had a couple high school kids that did those as uh, projects for their community service. Okay. And I know the family that did the original stencils with the Tecumseh Local. If that's what you want to put back down, I'll see if they still got them and 
I, I asked the uh, sign crew about getting maybe getting some free paint from the painting the lines and stuff, and, and he said that stuff dries so fast that it wouldn't work. But I've been tracking down the right paint to use for asphalt that will last at least uh, through a nasty winter, so we wouldn't have to do it all the time. But I'd like the permission to do that. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah, just stay in contact with Mr. Kicker. I do have yeah. a question about that. Yes, sir. And when I saw that, I did have a question. Is that going to be multi directional? I would like to, yes. Because I thought, well, one mile for one mile. It depends on which way you're going. I just start out and go, eight miles. Great. I can't. <laughs> Mr. Circle, thank you so much. That was very kind of you to do it. It's a pleasure speaking to your wife on the phone. She's very nice. So you have anyone phone. else in the audience before we move on? Can I get a phone number after the meeting from you? proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Mr. Mayor. For Reynolds. Move to accept ordinance 17-25. Second. Second. Okay, can you say Mr. Craybacher or Mr. Warner? Whatever. Or light. You, uh, Mr. Craybacher. That was three people now. Good we get the second. It's an explanation of this ordinance. Every year, this is what we call housekeeping ordinances. Um, we have to light our streets, um, but we do assess the property owners to do that, and this is the first ordinance to allow the council to proceed with that. Council, any questions before we move on? Mr. Kitko, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yep. Yes. John, you got me saying the wrong thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. I abstain due to the fact that where I live, there are no street lights, and therefore I do not have to pay up. Mr. Lethley? Yes. And Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Six to zero to one have passed. The one is an abstain. Moving on when you're ready, sir. Ordinance 17 26, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay, I believe, had it. We accept Ordinance 17 26. Second. Second by Mr. Lindsay. And explanation of this ordinance, as 1725 was the first step, this is the second step that actually pr provides the legislation to assess the property owner for that. At the last council meeting when this was introduced, the question came about, about how much does it actually cost? Um, so far, it's 58 cents per front foot of your house. So if you have 100 feet of footage, you times that by 0.58, and that is your share for the street light. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready, Mr. Kinko. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighting? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Once again, abstain due to the fact that I have no street lights. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Six to zero to one. The one was an abstain. It passed. When you're ready, sir. All right. Ordinance 17-27, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lethley. Who we passed. Ordinance 17-27. Second. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Lowry. An explanation of this ordinance, uh, another housekeeping ordinance. Uh, every year about this time, we had put legislation in, in place um, that if your water bill was unpaid um, and you didn't pay us, then we assess your taxes to regain that money. Council. Mr. Reynolds. I just had a question about this. Is I know this is pretty standard practice for us to do it every year, but how can someone continue to get water? Uh, up to the tune of eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars out to the city. They could have had a leak and walked away. And just moved. So it's not just living there. Still. Yeah, it's not like yeah. Like, oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, just making sure. Good observation. It's a lot. Sir, it's a big bill. Mr. What, what's the and time period on the? the they go August to August. Okay. 
Mr. Crabaugh? Well, I've noticed that the same addresses, a couple of the same addresses as Hong Kong on, on all the legislations. You know, they just don't want to pay the city anything. Um, they're abandoned. Uh, well, are they abandoned? Yeah. Jim said they could be abandoned. Are, are they abandoned? They could be a rental property, too. You know. Well, I know the one on Washington Street, you know, there's an older gentleman or somebody is living there, and he doesn't cut his grass, and I'm wondering if he doesn't pay his water bill. Also, you know. The 415 West Washington address? Yeah, yeah. Now the grass one's coming up next, so we'll have to see. Yeah, right. On he, he's on all of them. Well, that should. And that, that, that's the, no. like 211 Jackson. I don't know if that's a... Abandoned or oh, not. to 11 Jackson. So I'm just saying that they'll do, they're all on the same thing. You know. And I should tell you that that property is not taken care of very well. That's one of the questions. That's almost thousands of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Kick over, you're ready. Uh, Mr. Leslie? Yes. Sir. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. And Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Moving on. Ordinance 17 28, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and/or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lindsay, the move would accept Ordinance 17 28. Second. Mr. Whitey, second. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, just like the unpaid water bill, if the city goes out and cuts your grass and you don't pay that fee within 10 days, then we assess your property taxes. And how we do that is through placing legislation on the ballot. We list the uh, addresses and the total amount, and then council approves that. And then we return send that list to the auditor's office for collection on their taxes. Mr. Reynolds. Just real fast, again, uh, Mr. Kerrick brought this up, I mean, this individual is the city, I mean, for the water and for the uh, mowing, a little over $1,190. I mean, is there a better way to collect this? I mean, I know when we put it back on the back taxes, yeah. it's not sold, when it doesn't, we don't get the money to it's sold, is there a more aggressive way we can do this? I mean, how much does it take to take someone uh, to court if we paid Lynette to get that money back? This is the route we have to go done this. through the Ohio Revised Code. Yeah, but we, there's different collection ways, too. Mm, not that I'm aware of. It's the Ohio me. Attorney General's office, we can forward collection issues to their office, and they can collect with a certain percentage of the fee. Well, I don't, I've never seen that, so I'd have to see some legislation from the Ohio Attorney's office to prove that. Um, I'm not saying it's not, um, but this is the way the city has always done that. Um, and as far as I'm from, and as far as I know with my professional experience, this is the one and only way that you can do that with this particular kind of collection. Right. So I think it may be come down to the type of collection you're doing um, versus how you're collecting. Because I know we collect, for, I, just to disclosure, I work at the Ohio Attorney General's office, and I know that our office collects for income tax, real estate tax, just different things for local municipalities. And I don't know if this is one of them or not, but definitely like some, do some research on it just to find out because roughly, I didn't add it on the sense, but roughly just for mowing, we have right about uh, owed to us $9,111. That's not including the nuisance abatements that yeah. we have. Well, that's not including the, I mean, that was, there's obviously some change in there to add, and I was adding right. rough numbers. So, yeah. Sure. It's, it, I mean, it's about the same every year that we do. Um, and surprisingly enough, we do collect on a yearly basis with these. We receive the receipts that we receive in from the auditor's office. Just want to make sure. But if, if, we're, if you open to different methods, I would love to see the uh, yeah, legislation behind it that gives us authority to do that. Yeah, let me figure out so we can make it work on this a little bit better or faster. Sure, I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Anyone else? Mr. Kitko. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Passes seven to zero. 
And the last one, Ordinance 17-29, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Council, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I'm moving past Ordinance 17 days 29. Second. Go ahead. Mr. Reynolds, second. Who did the first? I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Last Mr. Way and second by Mr. Reynolds. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, just similarly like we do the grass cuttings, we also have legislation for nuisance abatements. The difference between a nuisance abatement and a grass abatement is grass is for your grass cutting, your weed cutting, your nuisance is for anyone who has trash or any other debris other than grass. So um, we don't do nearly as many as nuisance abatements as we do grass cutting abatements. But the nuisance abatements we do are usually large. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, questions, comments, Mr. Lefkoe, sir? How has the figure arrived? Is this the actual cost that was incurred to, to abate that property? How it works is um, the city, and this is for, from our codes that we have, it's $200 for a disposal fee, $250 for an admin fee. You might have to switch those, um, so I don't know if that's my head. And then it's $75 per hour per man. So if we have two city employees working on it, you're paying $150 an hour, um, plus cost of um, if we have to get a dumpster. So we pass a lot of these passes on to them. Now, I just want everyone to realize that those are pretty hefty charges, and I agree with you, but these are for the people who do not take care of their property. And if you live next to a home that is ravaged with trash, the last thing you want to see or smell is that trash. Um, I think a couple years ago we did one on Chestnut twice. That was rather large. Uh, we did a rather large one this past year, I think, on Washington Street. But they are definitely meant there to preserve the safety, sanitation, but more importantly, your home value. So they are pretty aggressive rates, but they're pretty aggressive rates for a purpose because we feel as though if you do it once, you get the bill, and you're probably not going to let it happen again. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, when you're ready, Mr. Pickle. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leslie? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Passes seven to zero. No, I can do it. Okay. Other business, uh, Congressman Warren Davidson uh, will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Uh, just in case uh, any new citizens, it's not on here, but new citizens, our city building is at 331 South Church Street. The city offices will be closed Monday, September 4th, 2017, to observe Labor Day. And that is all I have, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments before we move forward? Audience? I would like to. Can we make, mention the special meeting tomorrow? Oh, there will be a special meeting of, of city council tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, there will be another legislation voted upon. They will immediately go into executive session to hear um, information from the tax credit petition and then also pending possible pending litigation from our group health insurance plan that our city employees are coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. 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 Mr.